Hey everyone, Larry Chen here. We're in Hawaii this weekend and I did two shows. I did a show that's called Slammed Enough where we featured a bunch of interesting builds there. Um, both of these trucks were there and while I did a little piece, it was really loud and you couldn't really hear and it was indoors. So I'm gonna go over these trucks real quick before we run out of light. This truck belongs to my buddy Tommy from Wild Cards, Team Wild Cards, and this truck belongs to Rich, who is the newest member of Team Wild Cards. Uh, that is the car club that I'm a part of. It's all old school Japanese vehicles. And we're just gonna run over these things really, really, really quick. So Tommy here is from Wild Cards, and uh, I, I would say he's kind of like the wild card dad, right? No, not. Yes, not, yes. No. Yes. <laughs> uh, I've had a chance to feature uh, Tommy's other build, which is this Toyota Starlet, and it is so, so cool. Very, very interesting build, very different. But this time, we're going to feature his Toyota pickup. So this is. What, what is, what year is this? It's a 1978 Toyota pickup long bed. I basically get a second gen Hilux, yeah. What is the story behind this vehicle? Was it a Hawaii delivery vehicle? As far as I know, I, I bought it from some dude off of Craigslist who was using it to drive to work and stuff. So it's it basically, a, yeah, a, basically a private owned truck that people are using for, for their personal other kind. But when um, he put it up for sale, that's when I picked it up, well, probably about 12, 13 years ago. And so this has an interesting story because you put this badge here, it says Toyota, third time is the charm. Yes. Why does it say third time is the charm? I actually bought the truck three times. This exact truck? This exact truck. I bought it back, I believe it was 2009 from some dude on Craigslist. Uh, a few years later, I didn't need it, so I sold it to a buddy of mine. A couple years later, my dad wanted it. We bought it back from him. We found another car for dad, put this back on Craigslist, sold it, and then five years later, it popped up on Craigslist again. Is that a normal thing? Is that like something that's pretty common here on the island with these older JDM vehicles? Like they just pop up? And well, just, yeah. they just kind of go back and forth and if you want it back, you can eventually get it back anytime because uh, where else are they gonna go? Oh no, yeah, yeah. There, uh, there is actually kind of a, um, a lot of guys like if, say it's a like, really nice car or something and you sell it to a buddy of yours, there's a lot of times we'll be like, oh, you know, buyback rights, you know, and if you ever get rid of the car, let me know first. So, I mean, there, there is kind of an unspoken rule that people do that. So, I mean, I guess you could say, because yeah, the cars are so uncommon that people know, okay, so-and-so might want it kind of thing. So then, how was the condition for this third time around? Was there, there a lot of rust that you had to repair? There, what, what was the, what was yeah, the condition? There was a lot of, when I first got it, it wasn't too bad. It looks like they redid the body at that, before that time. But um, over so many years, like the the windshield, the windshield cowl basically got rusted off. All the bad areas on the edges, the doors, the fenders, mm -hmm. um, like just you know how all the edges just get really bad. Yeah. So like a lot of these parts are all all like used or repop parts kind of thing that I picked up from the mainland or around the world actually. Because these trucks are they pretty popular to restore? Um, they're getting there. Yeah, it, I'll, I'll be honest, when I first bought it like 15 years ago, it was hard to find parts. But now it's like there are parts, it's funny, I've been finding a lot of parts in Greece. Like um, the hood, the cowl, the fenders all came from a seller in Greece on eBay. Hmm. And yeah. And then you were telling me a little bit before we started rolling that each time you sold the car and you bought it back, you made a profit. Yeah, yeah kind of, yeah. Because I originally bought the truck for like $300. I drove it for a while. I sold it to my buddy for like like 1700 or something. And then when I, when I bought it back from him a couple years later, there was more rust on it, so I had negotiating power. And I got it for like 1300 or something. And then I did some work on it. Then we sold it again. I think I sold it for like 2200 
And then when I found it on Craigslist, the guy was asking 16. But the funny thing is, he told me how much he bought it for from his friend. And I was like, I'm not giving you more than that $800 you bought it from your friend for. <laughs> so, so you bought it for 800? I bought it for 800. Uh, but there was missing parts, so I spent about $400 to get it running again. And then the day I went to the DMV to register it, a lady just cut in front of me, ran my front end, so bummed out because I couldn't get the car on the road. But when we settled out, they gave me like $1,250, so I actually made 50 bucks after that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so pretty then funny. All in, how much do you think you've put into this build to this point right well, now? Well, right, right now, all in, because after like all the upgrades, the wheels and tires, I think I, I can't be winning more than 6000 probably. So let's and that's after I kind of broke even free kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So let's start on the outside. <laughs> so what what is is this all new or is this all used? What, where'd you get this stuff from? I want to say this is actually the original grill. This was I found a original inbox Toyota grill from Malaysia. No way. Yeah. That's and, why it looks so good. Yeah. Yeah. Because the original was cracked from an accident, but fortunately I found the other side. And it, was, and it was an original Toyota grill. What about this? This came from, I want to say Malaysia. It, it wasn't the straightest, wasn't the best chrome, but for, for trying to find parts, I mean, it, it is what it is. And is this actually meant for this vehicle? This is actually an add-on. If you mini truck guys know, this is actually a front apron, front balance from a Nissan 720. Oh, but it fits on the Toyota. Well, I kind of massaged the metal to make it fit. Huh. And it just, it, it fit very good. It looks great. Thanks. I love the wheels so much. So tell me about these wheels. Racing Service Watanabe wheels. Are very old school, very hard to find. Five spoke Watanabe 5S, I believe they called it. But what year do you think these are from? I want to say late 70s, maybe early 80s at the period. And then where did you get these from? These are, yeah, a Yahoo Japan auction thing. You got all five of them? I got four of them first. And then when I rebuilt the bed, I wanted a spare. So I found the spare as a single. This is my favorite feature of this truck. I love this so much. So first of all, what's going on with the bed? The bed was basically uh, a thought. <laughs> we were i after doing all the rust repair on the front of the cab i was i took the bed off to do rust repair on the bed it got to a point that i didn't want to put it back on right away so we kind of thought maybe we do this something temporary but it turned out so good that it's going to be a permanent feature at this point so then where did you get the wood the wood a lot of it was like reclaimed wood from my buddy rich he um brought all the scrap wood from whatever he had from the job site and then we just kind of drew up a plan to see if we can make it work. It looks so good. It, it just gives it a different feeling. I mean, yeah, it, it almost yeah, looks yeah. like an older American truck, right? Right, right, right. Is that the kind of what you were going That's for? That's kind of because I, I love those old Chevys with the low bed with the spare tire on the side and stuff. And I always love step side kind of. So, so then how did you figure out to make this? What is this from? What is so, this? So this is basically a trailer fender. And this is my old fenders that I, I scabbed off the wheel well just to kind of give it the same look as a Toyota. So then you had to get new fenders then? Well, I got new fenders before and I had the old ones lying around. So these are actually just repops from Thailand. But yeah, they don't fit perfect, but they look good enough to me. Can we take a look at the engine bay? Yeah, sure. I just love the way this truck looks so much. Look at it from the front. It just. It doesn't look like any other Toyota truck build I've seen. Very, very interesting Hawaiian style. So then tell me about the engine bay. Engine bay, it's very much the original engine from when I first bought the truck. Um, I did change out the trans to do an overdrive that I haven't connected yet, but original motor that came with the truck and she's still running strong. What is this valve cover from? Oh, this valve cover is actually from the later the later model, 22 Rs, but there's a way to modify them to make them fit so it doesn't hit the, the chain, the timing chain. I just wanted a different look. 
because I actually have another build with a 22R in it, so I just wanted to have it different. It's just really, really simple. Really, it actually looks really cool. I, I really like it. What is this? Is this a sake bottle or something? Yeah, basically oil, oil catch can. You see Lance in there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing in there? <laughs> this is just really, really cool. Let's talk about the interior real quick. Okay, so then what did you do with the door here? The what is, door? Yeah. That's an old school mini truck trick where um, you can shave the doors without using poppers. So what is this then? This is, what is this from? It's basic. well, the, the, the knob is from like an old Mustang or something. Oh. But it basically did the, basically did a rod that connects to the old door handle. Got it. And that way you can just push down and it pops it open. How was the interior? Is it pretty much the same the way it was when you first got it? Oh, I know that's the original floors. Yeah, pretty much. And the, the seats came from another truck. That's why it has seat covers. But the dash, the guy did a, a piece of wood to replace it. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it was irritating because it, had, it was a light wood, so it would reflect the sun. So I just covered it with vinyl just to make it look better. I just <laughs> really like the... I, I really love the theme that you guys went with. So then, because you and Rich, you guys have these trucks together. I just think it's interesting <laughs> that it's like juicy fruit and then double mint. Like, what a, what a cool theme. So all you're missing is uh, Big we're Red. We're missing Big Red. <laughs> so you need a Big Red truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> huh. So then what, did you guys decide to, to build these at the same time or what was, what no, was no, the I, theme? Well, I, I had my truck off and on for the past 13, 14 years. Right. Um, Rich bought this truck I want to say not even five years ago. So it's just something that he just kind of started getting into. Well, what was your idea? Like, how did you think, oh, well, let's just make these a themed truck? Like, what was it? It was, it, honestly, it was just because that's color of what they were already kind of thing. <laughs> did you paint this yourself or what did you do for the paint? Oh yeah, rattle can special. Really? Yeah. This is a rattle can job? Yeah, yeah. It's actually not that bad. Thank you. I appreciate huh. that. Oh. I, I, I did do a little trick. You get the, um, the graffiti guys, they have the wide, the wide spray tips. You use those, I got like a four or five inch spray fan. One last thing I wanted to show you guys that I was really <laughs> surprised about and I was stoked to see. My dynamic, my dynamic exhaust Yeah, tip. so Tommy's gonna start it. Hopefully. I didn't know what was going on here with the exhaust until he started it. Look at this. Is it now going to start? I don't know. <laughs> oh no! Did it just break down, Ryan? Uh, we're okay. It's probably flooded a little bit. Really? Yeah. What are you going to have to do? Oh, uh, air out the carburetor a little bit. Okay. We're going to have to air out the carburetor a little bit. <laughs> a few moments later. This is funny because if I wanted to stall the vehicle, I could just put my hand over it. Yeah. What a cool truck. I love it. Don't forget the lighting spark plug over there. Oh, nice. <laughs> we got a party going on here. We just talked about Juicy Fruit. Now let's talk about Double Mint. Double Mint. So is this a newer vehicle? What, what year is this one? This is a 71, 1971. Oh, so this is older. Yes. Oh, okay. And this is actually, this is, this is a, a, a really a Hilux. Yes, yes. Was this uh, originally a Hawaiian delivery vehicle? Yeah, so originally from the island. Um, I still have actually a 1976 City Hall parking sticker. I left it there just to kind of- Wait, this? Yes, 1976 City Hall parking sticker. City Hall. Yeah. What's left of it? It's, it's, yeah. it's <laughs> literally disintegrating. Yeah. It was, um, it was a farm truck actually, yeah. So we found it from um, Whitmore uh, by the close to Dole uh, pineapple plantation field. We found it over there. Maybe it was used to haul pineapple around, I, I huh? think so, probably, yeah, back in the day. I, is this our original color? 
Uh, this is not the original color, but it's not the original paint. So the original color was green. So I kind of color match the whatever left paint inside the, the interior and color match it. So oh, tell me about the wheels. This is uh, August Ferrozzi's wheels built by Barrel Bros. So I had him build on the specs that I want to fit a good fitment for this truck. They look great. Yes, thank you. Are there a lot of these left on the island? Um, I think here in Oahu, there's one, and there's a couple in Maui, I think. I just love the front end. I think it's so different. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, that's what I love about this car, just the front end is just really different. Did you have to get any uh, uh, any new grills? Or no, any? that's the original one, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy that, you know, all those are in, still intact. See the, the functional air vent? What, what's that? Also, uh, this is the air vent that goes inside the interior. Uh -huh. There's a dock going inside here to, to feed the air inside the interior. And that's stock? Yes. <laughs> it's one of the features. <laughs> it's interesting because this reminds me of the generation of the Tundra that I have. Mm. that has like a vent there, yeah, but it yeah. doesn't do anything. Oh. <laughs> so what I did was I put a light there, okay. so it's functional. But this is I functional. could see yeah. where it kind of came from. Yeah. Huh. What a nice looking truck. What about the interior? Did you have to do a lot with the interior? Um, it's front seat, I, I think that's uh, re-upholstered before, so, but and everything else is all original. Yeah, the, the dash. It's yeah. going to need some loving soon, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it looks like it's a volcano. It's opening up. So four-speed transmission? Yes, four-speed transmission. Can you take a look at the engine bay? Yes. Did you repaint this yourself? Yeah, I actually repainted it in my driveway just to, <laughs> to get it uh, in a decent condition. It's so fun to see both of you two together <laughs> driving around. So I've just upgraded uh, an IDF from the stock carburetor. And is this the original engine? This is the original uh, engine. It's an 8RC motor. How does this... Oh, I see what you mean. This is... Uh, yeah. This so is, here's the duct. <laughs> this is the duct. Here. Yeah. And it, it goes, goes into there. Yes. And it's fresh air. Yeah. That goes into the <laughs> cabin. Into, yeah. What a cool truck. I just love you guys driving together. I think it's <laughs> the coolest thing. They look so good together. Thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, it's a last minute. Uh, Tommy's idea, actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> double do mint and juicy fruit. <laughs> we love shooting in Hawaii, and for the past couple of years, we have been renting Airbnbs. Unfortunately, they pass a law where you're unable to host Airbnbs on Oahu. With that said, I reached out to my buddy, Zach Noyle, who is also a Canon Explorer of Light, and he suggested that we stay at the Twin Fin in Waikiki, which is a resort that he's done a lot of work for. So we're staying there which is awesome. It's a very family friendly. It is a beachfront hotel. So you just walk across the street and you go to the beach. Definitely love staying there. If you guys are interested in staying there as well, I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can check it out. We're at the Slammed Enough event. We're gonna check out some of the cars here, talk to some of the owners, and I'm actually going to invite some of these individuals to my event tomorrow. So we'll pick it up from there. Hope you guys enjoy the coverage. Mark. Hey. How are you? All right. Good? Yeah. Good? Okay. I just wanted to check out your Mazda truck. What's uh, what's the deal with this? This is actually my dad's truck. His original work truck. It was really, um, really in bad shape. And then, yeah, I kind of restored it. It's a keeper for me. Yeah. What a crazy build. <laughs> is this... Is this style, what is this called? Mi mini trucks or what, what's yeah, the style it's, it's called? It's a mini trucking, mainly um, started out in, in Southern California and then with the hydraulic bed and the hydraulics. Yeah, so it's uh, between mini trucks and low riding. Is yeah. it pretty popular here in Hawaii? Um, back uh, in, the, in the 90s, yes, 80s, it's starting to come back. Yeah, in the mainland, especially California, it's, it's really popular. How old is this build? Um, I actually just finished it uh, right before New Year's this year. Uh, so it's very recent then. Yeah, yeah. I um, been work on it, working on it here and there for a little for for a while. Just too busy working, you know. 
No, no time for my personal projects. <laughs> so then, um, wow, those switch panels, kind of crazy. So this was a work truck. Did you have to restore a lot of the interior? Oh, the actually the interior is original. Oh, really? Yeah. But um, then the my, outside. My, yeah, the outside. Every panel had damage. The roof was rusted. Every panel had damage on it. And then, is this original color? Yes, it's original color. But when I redid it, um, I took it a lighter, slightly lighter shade, so it actually looks a lot better than the original. The original is a bit darker. Is the engine bay stock? Yeah, it's stock. It's really beat up, so I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna change, do a engine swap. I'm gonna do a K24 in it. Oh, yeah, an active, nice. A Honda motor. Cause I'm into Hondas too and stuff. Got it. Yeah. But you restored a Mazda truck. Yeah, it's my dad's. So it's like a lot of sentimental value for me yeah. in it. Yeah. What a cool build. Thank you. I love it. This is so foreign to me. I just don't understand any of it, but it just looks so neat. Thank you. So then all of this stuff you have to build yourself custom? Yes, yes. I built everything from scratch. But then where do you even figure, like how do you even figure out the geometry or anything for, for um, this stuff? Actually, just off my head, I guess. Kind of look at the dimensions and what I wanted for it to do and went along with it. Right, because some of them like spin and some yes, of them do yes. some crazy tricks. Yeah, this one, the next phase, when I go back to it again, I, it's gonna, I'm gonna add a fit stage and a turntable. So it's gonna spin. I just didn't have time to do it. I, you know, do everything at, at once. You yeah. Know, I'm so busy working on other people's cars, you know, that bills to pay. Yeah. So this, this is actually over a, a long period of time. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Travis, well, tell me about your A86. I've never seen this sort of motor swap before. 3TC came from the 80s. My dad's idea, actually. Father-son project. 20 years ago, we started this. Hawaii's racetrack closed down. Kind of ruined things for us, so put her aside, kept her in the garage. We're here 20 years later, though. So then, this was a car that your parents bought brand new? Yes, sir. So back. this is the first car they bought back in 1987, brand new. Then I was born a year later, so, you know, this I was riding in this car in a car seat back in then. Is this the first show that it's ever shown? This is the debut. This, this is, is the her debut. first time she's ever seen outside world. So then, the question is, why this motor and why not a 4AG? Well, we start off bigger, 1.8 liter, yeah? You already start kind of cutting yourself short with a 1.6. So we started off, we're going to keep the motor NA. So at that point, we were like, we want reliability. Go for a cast iron block. Get that going, and um, motor's really not much, 30 over on the head. It's interesting because it's like a backdate build. Yeah, so we'll go, we'll take a step back into life, right? Come back with carburetors, uh, side drafts. Looks like ITBs, but those are side drafts. It's such a, it's such a good looking car. What did you guys do for the paint? So the paint, you can thank Island Concepts, Kilani Fender. This is my family shop. This is what we do, paint. It's such a nice, clean build. Can you tell me about the wheels? So the wheels, actually, uh, backstory on that, they came from Okinawa, from some good friends of ours, neighbors that moved in. They're in the part of the military, so they got them in here for free on shipping. Uh, I scored them back in the day for $300. They didn't look like this, but. $300? Back in uh, 2005, we'll go with. I think they go for about four grand online right now. Yeah. Hayashi's SSRs. Wow. What a nice wheel. Really cool build, really cool Appreciate car. It. So you're just gonna enjoy this around the island? Or? Yeah, I mean, she's a cruiser for now. There's no racetrack here. We can't really drift her, do anything crazy. Um, I'm actually pretty much saving it for my youngin right here. Uh, be Riley's car at the end of the day. I love that. Passing yeah. it down the generations. Yeah, it just keeps going down the line. And we got enough parts that if he uh, takes it into a wall, we'll fix it. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for showing us your build. Thanks, Larry. You know, I can't stay away from 240Zs. Got a soft spot in my heart for these. And this is a pretty wild build. <laughs> What's going on with this? So it's a 72 240 uh, with a 
5.7 liter LS1, all NA. You still have air conditioning, huh? I have air conditioning, <laughs> power steering. You need it. You need it for Hawaii. Yeah. It's hot here. And power windows. Oh, and power windows. What, what kit is this? It's the, the Pandem, the Rocket Bunny kit. So did you build all of this stuff? 90% of the car I did myself, minus the paint. And you did this in Hawaii? Yes. The car was actually just a bare show when I got it out of California. Uh, shipped it here and then did everything here over four years. Wait, is that your real plate? No. Okay. <laughs> a, there was a, a website online that made vintage plates. Right, that, that would have been so cool. It looks real though. Groguzi. That's cool. Huh. So then how much power does this make? Um, last time I dynoed it, it was at a 360. That's quite a bit for this car. Yeah. And it's without a tune. And it's on air ride too. Yes. On airlift. Very, very clean. Can, can I take a look underneath here? Yeah. Uh, it has its less clean features. Right, it has its quirks, no problem. Yeah. Work in progress. But home built, that's, yeah. that's awesome. That's really cool. The dash is really nice. I really like what you did with that. It's a, the Skillard aluminum dash. Ah. And then um, I modified it to put in a glove box and... Yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. It's, it's a, a different style and that's why I like it. I think it's really special. Thank you. I know it's an early 7980 maybe, but it came from the Bay Area. They did a one UZ swap in this thing. And it's a dually now. It's a, it's a du true dually setup from before. Like, is, is, I, is this just a Hawaiian thing? I've never really seen these anywhere else. Well, it's funny because this is actually from the Bay Area. So it's more like a mainland thing. But I mean, Hawaii, we guys love trucks here. So I, maybe that's what it is. So, but um, yeah, this thing popped up on one of my friend's uh, Instagram stories and one of the brothers down here picked it up. It's a pretty clean swap. I heard it's very clean, runs solid. Brother that owns it told me he's doing burnouts with it already and stuff, so <laughs> it runs strong. The, the car scene here is so small yeah. compared to the population that is on Oahu. So then it's almost like you know most of the cars that come in and out, huh? For the most part, I mean, you go into enough car shows, you almost see every car that's been built here. I mean, I, I'll, I'll admit there's a lot of the scenes that I'm not really into. I don't know the cars all that often, but the, the old school stuff, the cars that we like, we all kind of run in the same circles, so we see each other at the same meets, the same car shows and everything, and I think that's where it's hard for Hawaii. How many shows like this happen a year in Hawaii? Funny thing, this year, this is the first time Slam Enough's here. There's another show in March called Toon Empire, Tuner Empire, they're being here first, first time. Usually there's only two main shows, would be Week Fest and Spocom. A couple miscellaneous shows here and there, but for bigger shows, it's kind of weird that this is the first time here. So this year is actually a lot of people are coming for some reason. Do people ship their cars to Hawaii just to show their cars off? There, I, I remember one year at Spocom, there was a few guys that shipped their cars down from LA to be in the show and everything. Mm. But it's, it's a rare occasion, if anything. Oh my goodness, <clears throat> these are so nice. I love the LC500 so much. I love that there's some carbon accents on this vehicle. What a nice build, it matches so nice and it's very tasteful. Love those wheels. Emits, work emits. What a wheel. I love that it's almost embracing the machining or that's kind of the design aspect of it. What, it looks so good. Pure LC. There's not enough of these builds. Uh, this is a very expensive vehicle to begin with, but what a cool car. Oh, I love this SVX. Right. These are such quirky cars.
So then, this is manual swapped. Um, I don't know. I thought all of these were automatic. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Is it stick? Yeah. Well, if you guys, if you yeah, if you guys know, leave leave a comment below if you guys know if it's usually automatic. But I, I don't think I've ever seen a manual version of these. This is such an oddball vehicle, but I really enjoy the way it looks. I think it's very different. Very 90s, of course. Stagia. Whoa. Nice Stagia. Interesting color. I've never seen one in green. The rotiform aero discs, donuts, sprinkle donuts. Nice, nice Stagia. What's up with the plates here? Their plates are so on lock. Right hand drive wagon. It must be because there's just not that many of these special cars here yeah. in Hawaii. So a lot of these plates are just available. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's pretty much what it is. I think it looks very unique, very interesting. Very clean. Oh yeah, I wanted to see this bug. Whoa, what a nice bug. I really like this. Very clean red interior. Very clean. Definitely have to appreciate a clean Volkswagen bug. Kind of reminds me of my buddy Chris from Jay Leno's Garage. Tommy pointed out that he really likes the Civic. This has been around the scene for a little bit. <laughs> what a interesting exhaust setup here. That will be very, very loud. Pop, 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 pop. Nice color combo. Very spoon looking, spoon esque. Nice Recaro seats. Some carbon bits on it. Love the work wheels. Clean build. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.